Hey YouTube, Untamed here. So we've got a cold, frosty morning out here in Maryland. But I figured it'd be a great day to put both the Toyota Tundra TRD Pro nose to nose with the 2018 Ford Raptor Shelby Baja Edition. Uh, you guys know I own both of these trucks. Uh, so hopefully you can kind of keep that in mind as I walk through my few reasons why I believe that this $55,000 option right here is the much better option compared to this Raptor Shelby Baja edition. So MSRP on this Shelby was originally $118,000, right? So I mean, the MSRP of a, of a normal 2018 Raptor, I think it was right around 74,000, give or take, right? Depending on how you spec it out, you got the 802A package, but with, with this one being the fully 802A, fully loaded base Raptor before they throw the Shelby stuff on, it was probably right around 74, right? Then they throw on the $40,000, $45,000 worth of Shelby bits, the bumpers, the wheels, of course, the extra wheels that come in the back, the chase bed rack that comes with it, um, the the amp research kick out running boards, so a number of things, all the interior bits, blah, blah, blah. Then it spikes it up to that 118000 MSRP back in 2018. That is over double the cost of what you, you see here. Um, you guys know I did put on a number of things here. I uh, put on the Nitto Ridge Grapplers here, the 295s. Um, obviously I had that diamond back bed cover over here. Let me show you as I walk through it. Window tent, 20% on this all around actually. Uh, got the eye camper rooftop tent. This is the Sky Camp 2.0 and this is the diamond back bed cover. So for the folks who've seen my channel, stick around my channel, you know exactly what you're looking at. But for the folks who have stopped by for the first time, these are the few things I've done to it. These are the Predator side tube steps that came with it, uh, which I will have rock siders, Westcott Design rock siders on it here shortly. I'm excited for that. Put on the, the black decals there, um, and then put on a couple interior bits. And that is about it. So, but really, all together, we're talking, I guess, eye camper is a little more expen a little more expensive. It's about four thousand dollars for that. Um, Two thousand dollars for the diamond back. Five hundred dollars for the ceramic window tint. Um, I think fourteen hundred dollars for the tires. So all in all, I think I can comfortably say this is less than sixty-five grand. Comfortably say that, right? All together, and still, that's you know just barely over half the cost of what. You you know, the, the original owner paid for this guy here, assuming they paid the MSRP, right? Um, and even then, it is the much better truck, right? So I love the fact that the Tundra here is so simplistic. I'm purposely, sorry you get my shadow here, but I'm purposely getting it in the sun here so you can see them side by side with their, their unique paint colors. This is the Lunar Rock. You guys know that, it's the exclusive color for 2021 uh, for the TRD Pro models. And then this is Leadfoot Gray or lead foot, right? So this color I think looks amazing. I'm a huge fan of lead foot, especially on the Shelby Baja edition. With the Shelbys you get the the paint match front grille. And I think with any other color, even white, I feel like it's just it pops too much. On a standard Raptor, non-Shelby Raptor I should say, you have that dark gray front bumper, front grille here where this is all just that flat dark gray and I think it looks great. But then when you make a pant match and you get a white one or a lightning blue, it's just, it's way overdone. You know, as if it's not already with the <laughs> the, the hood scoop, um, the, all the Shelby stickers and decals that come on it with the chase rack, blah, blah, blah. Uh, as if it's not already overdone, I think that really pushes it over the edge. Uh, I know a lot of you are not a fan of this bumper, <laughs> which I've seen in a lot of comments. And I totally, I totally see where you're coming from. It is a, a little bit of an underbite. But I don't think that's something I would want to swap out. Uh, you know, maybe if I was going to keep it forever, perhaps I'd consider doing that. Uh, but I don't think the, the juice is worth the squeeze on that one uh, for, for my type of ownership, as you guys know. But all that to say, I like both the colors, but if I were to choose one of them uh, and actually put it on the Tundra here, it would, I, I would pick Leadfoot. I think this is a cooler color. Co cooler color. It's almost like a battleship gray, right, which is pretty sweet. Um, but why do I like the Tundra better? It boils down to a few things. I think, even though the, this dates back to 2014, really, with this redesigned version of this Tundra, this generation Tundra, um, 
I think the interior, even though super, super simplistic, and again, I am a Toyota fanboy at this point, let's state the obvious, I feel like this has already aged better than that Raptor over there. And I'll show you the Raptor here in a second. But this, even though simplistic, it already feels and just ages, the whole design of it, I feel like will age, continue to age better as well. So when I get into that Raptor over there, hopefully you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, like the screen setup here, although dated with the, you know, the, the metal bezel surrounding, surrounding it, a lot of plastic in here, a ton of hard plastic up top, everywhere you look is hard plastic. Granted, to be fair, you guys know I swapped this out. This was originally, I think, matching this color. Then this black surround here for the cup holders originally was a fake plastic chrome. So to be fair, I did that. As well as popped in this um, wireless charging tray here in the center. Um, but I think all together, and just the feel of it, I, I can't help but think that this is going to continue to age so much better given its simplicity. Not to mention everything in here is extremely easy to use and the Raptor isn't super difficult by any means but the controls in here as you see there the climate controls everything is just right within your reach very little is very little use of the touchscreen is required for you to actually get get stuff done as you're driving down the road let me pop over to the Raptor even the door again a lot lots of uh, cheap materials I do love that. That's pretty cool. The kick out running board there, the amp research ones. But this, and, and perhaps when I showed in video, you guys may not agree with me, but granted this one is used, right? It had 36,000 miles on it when I got it. I just don't like it as much when it comes to the overall feel. Got the Pano sunroof which I could do without. You have the standard sunroof over there. You do have black headliner in here. Uh, so again, another premium bit to it. I'm gonna pop to the other side so you're not getting a bunch of glare. There you go, a little better. So this, I hate, that just feels super cheap to me. This fake carbon fiber, and perhaps it looks real on camera, but it's not far from it. So it's almost like a, a carbon fiber print on plastic. There's some more here, it's everywhere. So not a fan of this. So there is a carbon fiber package that you could have gotten on the 802A. This is 802A, but minus a carbon fiber package. Uh, whereas this would normally be um, a legitimate carbon fiber and I'm happy that this didn't have it because looking at it right next to this and, and some did right if you, you can probably find them online and look at them see what I'm talking about you can see the legitimate carbon fiber which is normally right here right next to this and you're like wow that is awful looking so uh, part of me is happy that it didn't come with that carbon fiber package not to mention you would get it right here be right on the on the gear selection there. You can see here absolutely everywhere. And if you get the carbon fiber package right here as well is the legitimate carbon fiber. Um, so you get my point there. So I'm gonna fire it up here. Even the startup doesn't feel as exciting. It doesn't feel, I don't know. It, you'll see what I'm talking about maybe. It's just, it doesn't really give you the like that firm growl that that V8 gives you in the Tundra. Um, and unless you owned a Tundra or a V8, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. So this will probably sound good to most of you. I wasn't listening to Taylor Swift. <clears throat> I don't know how that got there. Okay, so this is... This is what the, the setup looks like in here. All the different controls, media controls. Sirius XM, of course. Um, climate control integrated within the screen here. 
uh, but you also have controls down here for, for the, like the temperature and whatnot. So you don't need to actually use the screen here. Um, like the all the all the hard buttons, I do appreciate, and maybe that's a sign that I'm getting older. I really do appreciate these. Straightforward, you just bop them, whatever you need for for whatever mode, fan fan mode, speed, um, yeah, speed here, and of course your heated and cooled seats. I think the Gen 3 is a tremendous improvement, as you guys probably have seen. Uh, it has that giant screen right here, I believe it's a 12-inch screen. Same size as the Ram TRX, but just horizontal uh, landscape rather than portrait, right? So you get that, that whereas the TRX is you know, the longer one downward. Um, so when you look at this, and perhaps it is because the Gen 3 came out, but th maybe that maybe that adds to the reasoning why this one feels older. Um, but even jumping in this, back to back from the, the, the Tundra there, I don't know what it is. It just, this feels cheaper, which is, which is weird, I know. And you guys may not agree with me. Let me pop out here so you can see more. There's your, there's your steering wheel here. I feel like the controls on this are a little harder to, they're not as intuitive on the Tundra. Again, I've been spoiled by the simplicity. Um, I think the center stack here looks good. Again, on the on the the Gen 3, you got a full digital display. Uh, but I think this looks good. I'm I'm a okay with this one here. Um, I prefer analog gauges I've, when you actually have the um, you know the tachometer, speedometer, um, where they actually are analog, right? They're not they're not digital screens because I feel like that is going to be a nightmare down the road. However, that is where we're going. Uh, that's what the future holds. So. Alright team, you got the Bang & Olufsen sound system here. Let me go back to normal. I think that sounds great, but I've never been a audio connoisseur or audio snob by any means. So the Tundra, what it has, feels and sounds just fine to me. I'll give you a, a quick audio clip of the, of the exhaust here, which sounds a little bit better on the Shelby. So not too bad, especially for a B6, right? But as you guys know, this one is, it's all tuned a little bit better and gets a little bit more horsepower than your standard Raptor. It gets 75 more horsepower. Um, so four, 525 as my sticker would suggest. And then 610 foot pounds of torque, if I believe. So again, quite a bit more than your, your standard Gen 2 and Gen 3, right? Gen 3 carried over the same exact power plant. Uh, and 10 speed transmission. One perk of, and forgive me, I should have done it while I was back here, but one other perk of this is um, the tailgate. So I don't, I don't like it when they have just a little button release. This is just one button right here. I'd rather it be a handle. Again, there's me maybe Toyota fanboying a little bit. Uh, I feel like this is just one more thing to break, one more thing to act up on you. So we'll pop that. So I could do without that. And then this here, I do love this. I wish the Tundra did have this piece. So I'll give some style points to the Ford here. But you pop that in, pull this out. You guys have seen this. Um, you step in cow manure, then you step on it. But then you got your pull-out lever over here, all the way out. Super easy to use, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can bop that out in like two seconds and then pop it back in. And then pop it in so quick. So I do appreciate this. I think Toyota could definitely have benefited from throwing this on the Tundra there. You know, easy to pop back down. You just hit the buttons in sequential order again. Slide it back in. Pull up. Get it straight in, and you're done. That's without the Shelby Baja sticker there, which I'm sure maybe I upset some people by doing that. Your 
rigid industry light bar is back here integrated within this Shelby bumper. And I like this, this uh, uh, back, I forget what they call it, off the top of my head actually, the, uh, the back placard here, which looks good. So here is the biggest piece and honestly why I like it and at the same time why it kind of bothers me. So I love the, the fender flares. I love the stance that the that the Raptor has. Forgive me guys, hopefully it's not too loud with the engine going. Let me turn it off. Here's your seat moving. So when you set your memory seats, another thing that you don't have within the, the Tundra there, uh, it'll move as you turn it on and off. But just the overall stance, puppy dog feature. Just the overall stance of the Raptor, I think, is so cool. You know, and perhaps it's the the child in me, but I, I think that's so cool, the, the wide fender flares. But I can see how, I don't know, I can see why that is a little bit too bro -y for some people. Um, you know, because really, with the Tundra here, I think it does strike a better balance, right? I mean, this is... It's sleek, has a good design, I think. Obviously, it's not in your face, but even back here, you can kind of see the edges here, but when you put it up against <laughs> that thing there, this feels like feels like a just a, a work truck by comparison, right? Work truck trim. So you can kind of see the little angled fender there, which is good. I, I, Again, I've grown to really like this, and I remember I didn't like it at all before, so I totally understand that people are t completely underwhelmed by that. Actually got a handle back here, which is the bee's knees. I promise I won't say that again. All right. But you get the hint there. Not known for its body flare. Um, flared fenders and whatnot. I think the Tacoma has the coolest body lines of the of the grouping. I always always kind of wonder if you know the trim here you know over time would get beat up by rocks and you know underneath here and just eventually potentially cause some rusting here to bubble up. You always see that in the older Silverados which are garbage um, but I was kind of wonder if that would be the case, whereas you're not going to get that with the with the Raptor, of course, and nor would you get it within the the Forerunner there either, because you get the plastic fender flares, if you will, that kind of protect it. Whereas you, you only get straight body right here in the trim, right? So maybe I'm the only person that thinks like that, but something I kind of have in the back of my mind. And you're not going to get that with this. You get again the fender flares here which are gonna protect it from the rock chips and it won't turn into uh, a rusted mess, if you will, throughout your actual fenders. There you go, one more, one more shot down the line. So, I'm indifferent on it. I like both. And I can appreciate both, for sure. I think really it's just the type of person you are, which one you prefer. Again, I feel better driving this. You get the fake hood scoop here which people are indifferent about. I used to, it used to bother me a ton, especially on my old, my original Tacoma. I uh, wanted to make it functional, even if it meant drilling it out, cutting it out, and actually making it functional. Uh, that felt more right to me, and I didn't do that. I'm happy I didn't, and I've grown to appreciate it on the, on the Toyota. It's almost like a, a Toyota staple at this point, whereas this one here on the Shelby is, of course, functional, feeding that... <laughs> Whipple cold air intake within there as it is a turbocharged vehicle as you wouldn't know that anymore because I got rid of My turbo sorry. I'm giving you weird lighting here, but I got rid of the turbocharged um, Pop-up badges similar to this but way more cheesy and from AutoZone, right? So we got rid of those I do love this portion of it, which is on your regular Raptors But you get the additional flare up front here and of course the stripes which are which are standard for a Shelby. And I've thought more about this by the way guys some of you are going to beat me up but I did decide to keep it. Um, you know the more I look into it it does it is subtle enough it's black thankfully right um, 
you know, stickers kind of suck, but it, it is a, at least paying tribute to, you know, what Shelby set out to be, what it has always been. And, and this is something that is always on Shelby's, right? You got the GT 500s have it, uh, 350R Heritage Edition, they have it. So I'll be keeping it. Suspension wise, I can't talk about the two trucks without talking about this, their, their suspension, of course. You got the Fox Tier Detuned uh, suspension on the, the TRD Pro here, and I love it. Um, I think this is perfect for anything that I would do, um, you know, unless you are legitimately trying to Baja race your truck and <laughs> running it through the dunes, and then then you would maybe want to upgrade to this guy here, this is the Fox upgraded 3.0 suspension. So this is definitely heavy duty and phenomenal i mean just soaks up everything and, and much more than what i would ever throw at it for being honest of course so uh but pretty cool and fun show it back here as well and you guys are thinking to even jump bro so both of them are phenomenal in that regard i've never had an issue or a complaint with the the, the quote-unquote stock Fox Tier D tune suspension on any of the Pro models. I think I think they're all great. When it comes to back seat space, the Tundra has the Raptor beat, and probably by at least it feels like I don't know maybe by a few inches really. Um, and this is a huge plus of the Tundra of this generation Tundra. The next generation Tundra, although they the numbers that they post make it seem as if it's not going to be that much of a um, downgrade when it comes to rear space, cabin space. Seemingly, when you actually look at it and see all the videos of it, it looks a lot smaller than this. So maybe maybe I'll be a believer once I actually get eyes on it and, and drive it and feel it out. But I love this about the Tundra. And being about that dad life, I really appreciate it. You do get under, make note of this, so you get cargo space underneath the Raptor there, which is better than this, of course, where this bops up underneath the seats, which is not as cool, um, but just something to note. And of course, you got the tan headliner, which we talked about in the standard sunroof. Let me show you real quick what it looks like over here. Sorry, guys, I didn't put too much thought in this. I kind of talked through it as I'm doing it, of course. Okay, look at about that dad life. So. Both of them are great. I won't complain about either one of them, but you do feel even the entry here, you know, it definitely is bigger in the Tundra comparatively, but both are great. No issues. Just kind of look at the size of that door compared to this. Like the back door is bigger than the front door, which is not the case on the, the Ford there. Right. The wheels, I would prefer if these wheels were all black, all satin black. I think that would look best, including the the bolts here the uh, around the, the ring. I think that would look all good black. Uh, but really, I think these are cool. I mean, I, I had no gripe about it. And I like the red uh, brake calipers within there too. love these wheels um, so many people swap out these wheels to fit bigger tires on them which you have to if you're gonna go any bigger than 295 really um, you can go bigger than 295 you can do the you know the the 35s with 12 and a half inch wide on these wheels but it's just you now you're starting to teeter tour toward if it's safe or not really so this is as big as I would go uh, comfortably anyway I'll show you the the glorious dual TRD catback exhaust, which is a huge plus of this vehicle, is this is going away. All right, we got the, the, the twin turbo V6 variant hybrid on the new Pros and, and no, no longer a V8 option, which is a bummer. People don't care so much right now, but here in a few years, we'll start really missing this. I guarantee it. And the sound that it gives is, uh, is intoxicating by comparison, I think, between the two of them here. And the Raptor sounds good. So don't get me wrong, but the, the, the Tier D Pro is better by a long shot. So again, you got the, the dual on this side too. 
So to be fair, I'll fire this guy up. Flimsy door handle here. You notice that right when you walk up to it, you're okay. And you got the little bopper here to lock and unlock it. Again, push to start. sound. I love it. <clears throat> I feel like this whole screen in here, everything in here, just I like better. It's a lot more intuitive, a lot more easier to use. Just a huge fan of it. Again, everything you need, nothing more. Hard plastic up here where you get the, the softer material over there. Um, no Bang & Olsen logo in the center, <laughs> center tweeter there, if you will, uh, speaker rather. Get these big plastic tweeters up here. <laughs> uh, these are aftermarket rings. Normally it's a chrome or a silver underneath there. Yeah. I just feel a lot better driving this. Um, you know, just the overall visibility is phenomenal in both of them. Granted, not so much with my, um, with my eye camper back there. So you can still see underneath it a little bit, but it's not ideal, of course, but great visibility in both rigs. Um, both of them do have LED headlights. Um, the lighting overall is, is much better though on the on the Raptor. You get the, um, of course, you get all the rigid industry. I mean, these are these are legitimate light bars, right? If, if you're not familiar with rigid industries, they are top of the line. Uh, super expensive if you're going to buy them separate, you know, individually. Um, like even this light bar is probably like fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand dollars for that fifty inch right there, uh, which is crazy to me. But excellent lighting throughout. Even on the standard Raptor, the lighting's better. Uh, when you open the doors, you get the uh, the rocker lights that pop on uh, underneath the, the amp research boards there. So huge fan of that. But at the end of the day, and I mean this, you know, I own both of these guys. Right, I can easily pick one of them uh, to keep it. It almost makes more sense for me to keep this one for the long term, because um, I could sell this one. I mean, Kelly Blue Book value right now is 64 grand on it, right? And that's me selling it to Vroom, right? Yes, Vroom offered over 64 for it. Um, when I just plug in my VIN number for it, you can, I encourage you guys to do that too, and you'll be kind of an awestruck by it. So it almost makes more sense to sell this one before the Raptor. Financially wise, I mean, I spent MSRP for it, which is 55. Um, but I just I prefer the Tundra, you know, and, and I've sold it before and I've regretted it. Uh, I've had two of them before, and every time I sell them, I just feel that I, I don't know if I want to make that mistake again. So, realistically, any one of them is going to be on the chopping block first, it's going to be the Raptor, um, you know, especially with you know, Gen 3 is right here around the corner or happening right now. Um, I'd be curious to, to see how those continue. It looks like everybody and their mother is trying to build one right now. So potentially the price tags of them will start coming down drastically into, into 2022 here. Uh, especially we got a Raptor R coming too, the, the TRX some legitimate competitor. So I'm excited to see that. Um, but anyway, guys, I made this video extremely long, but I wanted to just kind of walk through the details of both these trucks with you and let you know my thoughts on them. Both of them are phenomenal rigs. Uh, I like them each for their own unique reasons, of course. Uh, but if I got to pick one, I'm going to pick the $55,000 Toyota here. So appreciate you guys watching. Let me know what your thoughts are. Until next time.